Hello. Я понимаю. For today's video we're taking a look at a Tair 3 300mm f4.5 camera lens made in the USSR in the mid 1960s. In part 1 we looked at the Tair 3 when it first arrived and fixed a number of issues including an incorrectly assembled aperture mechanism and fungus on the lens elements. I'll put a link to that video in the description. In this episode, we'll have a general look at the lens and actually get to test it out. This lens would have originally been part of a Zenith photo sniper kit, complete with a gun looking trigger assembly and shoulder stock. The photo sniper kit had a distinctly militarian look, and the earlier versions were indeed made for the Soviet military. I don't have the rest of the kit, and although it'd be kind of nice to have it, I think I'd be too self-conscious to actually use it. I've got enough strange looks filming the intro for this video. It's quite a chunky lens, measuring 250mm in length and weighing around 1.5kg, and, and I think the term built like a tank is quite appropriate. Focusing doesn't use the normal helicoid system, but instead has a rack and pinion controlled by this knob on the underside. It's actually quite nice to use, and much simpler to service. Also on the underside is the mounting bracket. This would have been used to mount the lens to the trigger mechanism, and it has a 3 8 inch thread, so I'll need to make an adapter to mount it to a standard quarter inch tripod. At the rear of this bracket is the aperture release lever, which would have been activated when you pressed the trigger. The lens doesn't have the more common aperture pin just to the side of the screw mount. There's a large aperture ring at the rear of the lens, with apertures ranging from f4.5 to f22. In front of that is the cocking lever. This is pushed to the right to cock the aperture, and then when the trigger is pressed it shuts the aperture with a big clunk. This would happen a fraction of a second before the shutter would fire on the camera, and could potentially introduce some shake into the photo. It's not quite so violent at wider apertures, and won't be a problem for me anyway because I'll be manually shutting the aperture before I actually take a shot. This lens has 16 aperture blades, and produces a very round aperture even stopped down to f22. I really like the battered and purposeful look of this lens. I'm not sure how often I'll use it, but I'm pleased I bothered to get it and fix all the problems with it. So I think now we can actually put the lens on a camera and see how it performs. For this first set of shots I've placed a mechanical calculator in front of some fairy lights, and taken pictures at all apertures. Wide open at f4.5, the shot is totally usable, and you've got some nice big bubble bocker going on in the background. There's a bit of chromatic aberration going on, but that could be fixed during editing if needed. 
At f5.6, the bubbles are slightly smaller and a bit more of the maker's name is in focus. Moving on to f8, and the maker's name is much more readable, the chromatic aberration is more under control, and you'll note that while the bubbles are now smaller, they're still round due to the 16 aperture blades. By f11, the background is starting to get a little bit annoying, but much more of the calculator is in focus. You can also begin to see multipoint stars around some of the Bokka bubbles, created by the slight unevenness in the aperture blades. At f16, you can see most of the detail in the calculator, and the multipoint stars on some of the pinpoints of light are more noticeable. You can hardly call them bubbles by this stage. And finally, at f22, the calculator is more or less all in focus, and you can see that the fairy lights are sitting in a glass bowl a couple of feet behind. This lens isn't really an indoor lens, particularly when fitted to a Micro Four Thirds camera as it was for these shots. With an equivalent focal length of 600mm due to the crop factor, it was all I could do to get as much of the calculator in shot as I did. Next we have a view of some fields and trees. The track in the middle of the shot is just under two miles away from where I was standing, so the lens doesn't disappoint when photographing distant subjects. This shot of some autumn leaves sitting on a box hedge had some lovely glowing colour to it. The shot was taken wide open at f4.5. If I crop in, the leaf I focused on is good and sharp, and nicely separated from the background. As you'd expect, shooting with the right conditions gives you some great bubble bocker, as seen in this shot of an apple tree branch. I was shooting somewhere around f5.6 or f8 when I took this one. You do tend to find some different subjects when shooting with a long lens like this. I just happened to train the lens on these red leaves, and the colours were so amazing I just had to shoot off a shot or two. Of course, this still leaves the big question. Is this lens any good for spying? Well, I happened to bump into our local Soviet spy recently, so I stole one of his rolls of film while his back was turned, and here are some of the shots. I think that more or less covers it for this lens. I've put a link in the description to the previous video where we repaired this lens. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be plenty more vintage stuff coming soon. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.